This is the Buren Peninsula, a long, boot-shaped piece of land that juts out into the Atlantic from our south coast. It's barren, it's rocky, it has more than its share of fog. Yet there's a special beauty here in this land of dories and trawlers, this land where the ocean is always near. The people who live on the Buren Peninsula make their living from the fishery. In fact, it's long been regarded as one of the best and most prosperous fishing areas in Atlantic Canada. Certainly, it's home to some of the best fishermen. I dare say, better than half our trawlermen come from here. And the names of the famous captains and sailors and fish killers that have called the Buren Peninsula home would fill a book. And they're still there too. A younger breed now, making their living not on the salty old banking schooners, but in modern multi-million dollar trawlers. But troubled times have come to the Buren Peninsula. Two of the four major fish plants have closed their doors, tied up their trawlers. It's a severe blow to the people who depend on the fishery for a livelihood. And here, that's just about everyone. To find out what a fish plant means to the Newfoundland economy, Land and Sea visited one of the two plants on the peninsula that so far has managed to weather the storm. The fishery products plant at Marystown. Well, Bon, you've got quite a big plant here, haven't you? Yeah, I believe this is the largest in Newfoundland. Uh, we have uh, we range between 900 and 1,000 employees, uh, about 1,000 during our peak period. So it will be quite a severe blow if, if you have to close down because of the crisis in the fishery today. I would think so, uh, a, a major blow to the community. This year, if we operate until the end of the year, uh, we will put out something in the vicinity of $20 million in wages and uh, uh, pay to trawlermen. It's a pretty impressive sight downstairs with all those plant workers there working away and then outside the vessels unloading. Could you describe what happens when the ships come in? I think you've got an unusual unloading system here. Yes. Uh, the discharge system is uh, unique to Newfoundland. Um, it's a bucket conveyor type arrangement that actually goes right down into a sump in the hold of the boat. Uh, the hold men push the fish onto a conveyor belt, which conveys the fish to the sump, and the bucket conveyor picks it up and uh, conveys it then, elevates it and brings it into the plant. I notice it's mostly flounder you've got today. Yes, this time of year, that's our major production, is flounder. Well, tell me what happens now when the flounder goes along the assembly line inside the plant. Well. Uh, initially, of course, it's weighed, and uh, we store it in tubs in the holding shed, or if, in fact, uh, we, we need not store it, that is, if we can produce it as quickly as we can discharge it, uh, it just goes directly to the lines, where it's put in 75-pound boxes. Um, this is to suit our individual incentive system. The, um, the boxes uh, are pulled off the line by the individual cutter who fillets them into a separate pan and then he drops his number in the pan and puts it back on the assembly line. Uh, that goes to a weigher who weighs and records that particular box of fillets uh, for the individual cutter. Uh, he's paid a set 
hourly rate, below which she doesn't go. But uh, in accordance with the number of boxes of fish he cuts and a basic recovery that he must achieve, uh, he can earn as high as 64% above his hourly rate, and many do. What would that mean in terms of a yearly income? How much could a good cutter expect to get? I would think in the vicinity of $20,000. Now, he has to be good to get that, but there are many who do. You take um, approximately $10 an hour if he's at maximum bonus. Uh, many work a 46-hour week, 50 weeks of the year. That's $23,000, but that would be maximum. At the end of the cutting line, uh, of course, the fish drops to the skinner, uh, where it's skinned, and then there are graders there who actually decide what pack the fish should go into. Top quality, defectless fillets would go to IQF or layer. Those that need trimming would be separated and go to the trimmers. Uh, the smaller pieces would go in one pound or block. Uh, of course, we try and keep block to a minimum because it's the lowest return. They come from all over to work in the fish plant, an army of women and men. Throughout the island, there are some 15,000 fish plant workers. Actually, there are as many Newfoundlanders working in the plants as there are fishing. It's an underrated industry, an industry that keeps hundreds of communities alive. Our employees are used to uh, a very decent level of income uh, and on a 52 week of the year basis, uh, 50 that is, uh, they're, they're off for two weeks at Christmas. Now in most parts of Newfoundland, the three or four months closure would be, would be normal, but uh, it's different here, right? Eh? Yes, very much so. It, it's uh, more industrialized here where we have uh, both fishery products and uh, the uh, shipyard. Uh, people are used to 52 weeks of the year and uh, to operate any other way would be a blow to them because uh, people, of course, gear their lifestyles to their income. And what about the plant itself? To close down the plant, uh, wouldn't that be the same as closing down a plant on the northeast coast? No. Uh, this plant, of course, by virtue of its very size and the type of machinery that we have uh, and the full-time staff that we have uh, is a very expensive plant to operate. Uh, the thought of having it sit here for two or three months of the year with no fish going through it is totally out of the question. It just could not exist. The losses would be phenomenal. Yeah, uh, just unbearable. Uh, no one could sustain. That is no industry that, that must make a profit in order to exist could sustain the losses that would result uh, uh, during a regular three-month closure. Everything is, uh, is backed and financed and uh, again you have uh, staff, you must have the engineers on at all times, uh, boiler engineers, um, refrigeration engineers, watchmen, men to attend to the vessels and maintain the vessels, men to maintain the plant, the administration continues whether we're operating or not. Taxes go on, heat, power goes on. Power may decrease a little, but certainly not that significant. So the overhead is still there, and the overhead can be carried by production and nothing else. So you're keeping your fingers crossed that, that the crisis in the fishery doesn't hit you here in Marystown? Well, we certainly hope not. Buren is the other port that's still open. The plant workers still busy. The draggers still sailing. The Zarita was getting ready to head for the Grand Banks when we arrived in Buren. The crewmen were boarding. And the skipper wasn't far behind. Captain Fonce Warren, a young man but with considerable experience in fishing the Grand Banks. 
He and his men have done well at the fishery over the years, working full time. Except for a two day turnaround, a couple of weeks at Christmas time, and a brief summer refit, Fonts and his crew live on the offshore grounds. Well, Fonts, you're ready to go again? Oh, yes, ready to make another trip. Where are you headed this time? I imagine we'll go down to the Grand Banks and east of St. John's there somewhere to start off anyway. We'll probably work our way to the southern part of the bank from there. What are you after now? Mostly flounder, but the yellowtails are, uh, are, have uh, been, we can take pretty well uh, what we like, just that we got to take them on the last four or five days of our trip. But we usually start off on flounder for the first three or four days. How's fishing been this summer? Oh, it's been pretty good, real good. Better than when you were north uh, in the winter on the no, no. Hamilton Bay? <laughs> not quite as good as that, but not bad. Where would you rather fish now? Is this the best grounds to be on, the Grand Banks, or, or do you like fishing north? Well, we like fishing north for the simple reason that there's, there's lots of fish. We can get some quick trips down there in the wintertime, but uh, it's a long steam and it's pretty cold down there, but it's okay. With all the plants closing now, you must be a bit uneasy at times. Not really, not, not for our company anyway. It's, pretty good hopes that we won't, uh, won't have to close down. We can keep operating for the rest of the year anyway, at least. There must be a lot of talk, though, among the crewmen and the skippers. Oh, well, yes, a lot of speculation, but hopefully that will uh, we'll carry on. If you were laid up now for a couple of months, would it, would it uh, hurt some of the some of the fishermen? Or? Well, yes, for two months off, it would be a long time without any, uh, without any income, I guess, apart from unemployment insurance, which the don't go too much on anyway used to have been employed for 12 months a year. You haven't stopped very much in the, the past 10 or so years you've been fishing? No, not at all. Just a couple of strikes. That was it. Last year now you had the strike to worry about. This year uh, it's, there's, there's uneasiness in the marketplace. Well, there's apparently at one time when you're at this job you had a lifetime job. I don't think it'll be that way anymore. What about the stocks out there now? Is there lots of fish? I mean, are you worried about, about the future of the fishery? No, not too much worried about it altogether. It seems like uh, new conservation measures and that seems like it's helping the thing along pretty good. So I think we're okay in regards to supply of fish. It's no problem. We left, and the Zarita was on her way, heading for the Grand Banks, for the schools of flounder and yellowtail. The fishermen on board the Zarita are the fortunate ones. They have a job, a check at the end of the trip. They know that there are many other trawlermen at home today on the Bjorn Peninsula, men that would be out there too if they had a chance. Look at Beaubois, a little harbor not far from Marystown. Practically all the men here are deep sea fishermen. Most fish out of St. John's. This man is a cook on National Sea's top vessel. Here is where he would be right now if he had his way. Back on board the vessel, cooking up a scoff for the boys somewhere on the Grand Banks. He and hundreds of other trawlermen must gaze at the vessels lying idle in St. John's and all along the south coast. Grand Bank is dead. So is Fortune, and so are dozens of other smaller places along this shore. Places such as Lameline, which is home to many draggermen and plant workers. Everyone is staggered by the closures. Walter, I suppose you never thought you'd see the day when Grand Bank and Fortune closed their doors to the fishery. No, oh, I never ever thought, you know, these plants were closed. Because after after the salt fish industry, well, years ago when we were salting the fish, and then it turned to the to the fish fresh fish industry. And you know, the offshore and of course the inshore too, and and, and these plants in Grand Bank and Fortune, I, I really did not think they would they were closed. Never. I didn't think that at all. They were pretty prosperous places for a long while, weren't they? Well, my goodness, you know, that, that was the only industry, uh, the fishing, uh, the plants over there in Grand Bank and Fortune, and, uh, and they were doing a brisk business, you know, and you could see it, you could really see it in the, these two towns. And, uh, and I expect uh, that was one of the decisions of the uh, 
provincial government, Dave, you know, try to move the people into these towns where they were pretty sure, you know, where there were plant and the, and the draggers, where there was plenty of work that uh, they were going to be successful. But, you know, right now, uh, you know, I don't know what to think of that now. Here's Don Thornhill's home on Allen's Island, just across the way from Lamoline. He works, or I should say worked, as a cutter in the Fortune fish plant. What does he think about it all? Yeah, well, it's been pretty good, I must say, ever since uh, Fortune uh, Lakes took over. It did pretty good work there. Eh? We, bring all, we don't have much overtime, but you get a pretty straight week all the time. How much money now would a cutter expect to make in a good week there? In the a plant? straight week? Mm. Around $250. Okay. So you're making about $1,000 a month? Roughly, yeah. What happens if they don't open again? What's it going to mean to this shore? Well, I mean, we only draw on point for a year, I guess, and after that, who knows, you know? i we get more jobs, and I wouldn't know where they, uh, where are you going to give them to around here? Because uh, you ain't get that much education, and uh, I mean, we can't get a job unless you got the qualifications. So it was not a very good time here in Lamoille. No, and that's for sure. No. So the salary means quite a bit to you, then? It do. It means, well, the extra things for my kids and extra things for my home, where I wouldn't be able to do it on my husband's income. And like I said, right now, we have a $50,000 home built, and our uh, monthly payments on that is $200 a month, and all this got to come into my husband's check. What's the talk now among the, the women who work at the fish plant? Do you talk about it? Do you worry about it? Oh, yeah. We do. I do, myself, and I think everybody else feels the same. I'm wondering and hoping that it will open, and this will mean good for everybody. Well, this is the only thing that's is here to look forward to, it's the fish plant. I looked for some dragger men. Usually they're hard to find, for they normally spend most of their time at sea, but not now. Here at Point May, I found two brothers, Isaac and Michael Slaney. Well, Isaac, it's not a very good time here in Point May, is it? The, the fishery closed down all of a sudden? Yes, yeah, poor time now, but it's not much down. How long have you been off now? Uh, I guess we've been off now. Three months. Three months, yeah. Three months. Are you starting to feel it down here now or, or not? Is it, is it too early to really feel the effects yeah, of the off? Yeah, you can feel a pinch here now. Everybody drawing on employment and everything, you know. Not too much after, you know, making a few dollars and you got to come in and defend on unemployment. You were telling me earlier you did, did pretty well last year. You made a fair amount of money even though you weren't fishing the full year. Yeah, we've done all right. You can make a nice bit of money, as you know, if you get a full year, you know. How much would you make? Twenty? Thousand, twenty-five thousand in a good year? Yeah, I guess you would. With a good boat, it'd be easy. Yeah. yeah. Fish is there to be caught if you can get it. You know, they allow you to catch it, and uh, the plants will operate. But yeah. right now, that's a that's a problem. <laughs> but is enough being done now? I mean, people are talking about it up here, but do you think there's really enough effort being put into solving the problem? There's no effort being put into it. Uh, there's not enough uh, confrontation between the people and the government. Uh, seems that our premier is sort of that's forgetting about the, our main industry, we'll say. Uh, apparently, there's too much oil kicked around, you know. There's quite a few people out of work up here. It's really a big blow, isn't it? Well, it's the main industry of the area. It's like uh, Alcan was with uh, St. Lawrence and uh, Lund. Uh, this is the second time over for me. Like I told you before, uh, this is the second time that I've had to uh, readjust. Uh, well, when the mine closed down, I could turn to the fishery, but uh, being an unskilled laborer, uh, I don't have much choice now. i got to go somewhere and uh, maybe leave the province. Or... Are you thinking seriously about that? Yes, very seriously. Uh, just a few days ago, uh, I sent an application to uh, the mines department in Vancouver. And uh, I've contacted the offshore in uh, St. John several times. No luck. What's that, offshore oil? Yeah. So you, you've been trying to Hopefully go... Hopefully that's going to be the big thing, seeing that the fishery is going to fail. It seems that way anyway. 
Yeah, I've been thinking along the same lines because uh, both of us have been in St. John's trying to get out on the, on the supply boats. Eh? Is it hard to get a job there? Yeah, it seems, to, uh, seems so anyway. So we've been in two or three times now, I guess. We haven't had any luck anyways. Do you want yeah. to go on the oil rigs, or is it only because the fishery is so bad? So well, it's hopeless. There's not much choice, really. I mean, that's all. Uh, that's all I've known. Uh, that's all I know, anyways. You know, is the sea. I spent now seven or eight years dragging. And if I can get a job on a boat, I'll take it. You know. Would you make as much money on an oil rig and, uh, or on a supply ship as you would on a dragger? No, I don't think you would. But you'd be willing to go at it. Sure. Anything would be better than unemployment. Michael, I suppose you're, you're used to drawing a full-time salary all year round, because you fall as fish all year, don't you? All year. All year. Yeah. So unemployment insurance doesn't mean a great deal to you, does it? I mean, that's a big... <laughs> unemployment, unemployment insurance is that much good to me, because uh, I have a mortgage home, and uh, I have commitments to meet, and unemployment can't do that for me. Eh? So you've been used to a regular salary. That's right. You go out all year round on the draggers. That's right, yeah. Well, that's been uh, since the, the Alcan uh, thing in St. Lawrence. That's what I've been doing. Some Fish people now think that people in, in the smaller places in Newfoundland own their own homes and don't have any mortgages or or, uh, or or regular expenses like city people do, but that's not so, is it? That's no, that's not so. A lot of people around here got the bills. They got to live. They got to eat. You know, and, but the new uh, interest rates and uh, the price of food those days, pretty hard. What do you see happening now over the winter if this continues? Well, it's not too bad now because uh, this time of the year, you know, you can scrape through because there's no, really no heating bills. But when it gets colder, people are really going to find it. People are really going to uh, feel a pinch here. What about the inshore fishery? While most of the fish landed on the Bjorn Peninsula comes from the trawlers, a fair amount is landed by the smaller inshore boats, longliners, dories, and prep skips. In fact, some of the biggest catches of fish we've ever filmed on land and sea came from the waters of Lawn and Lord's Cove. Some crews here have landed over a million pounds of cod in the trap season alone, but not this year. Here's Peter Henneberry of Lord's Cove. We started off with a very, very poor trap fish with next to none. That was the whole area from Lawn to Point May. Then uh, after we got into the door, was a smaller boat. Started off fairly good, you know, we were making a, a week's wages every week. Then we got to trawl with the plants. We had five or six weeks in the door, and then we were caught off with nowhere to sell. And as a result of that, see, Dave, the, a lot of the inshore fishermen, in this area especially, are left with six or seven stamps, not enough to draw down employment insurance. Then we were at the, tried to sell a bit to try to get something going with St. Lawrence and that fell through. Then we thought we had something going with O'Brien's down in, down on the Cape Shore somewhere, Bay Bulls, and that fell through. And we, through provincial fisheries and whatnot, we got something going with Lon. And the last week Lon opened up to try to help us, you know, for to buy the fish or the next, what's left of the season for to try to get enough stamps for the rest of the fishermen. But the weather's, haven't been too hot as you can see today. And that's, so, it's that's, almost too late now. That's right, it's almost too late. Well, they won't salvage none of the season, but the only chance is they might get a enough stance for the drought unemployment insurance over the winter months. Is unemployment insurance the answer? Will that solve all the problems? Well, uh, Dave, unemployment insurance is an answer in one way, but it's not going to solve the problem because everybody now, including the plant workers and the inshore fishermen, everybody this day and age needs a weekly salary to get by on. Supposing there's only make work projects like kind of development projects or stuff like that. At least you can govern yourself to a certain amount of money that you're going to have in the house at the end of the week. That's how much money you're going to spend. And you've got to wait a two week period and and this in this area here is given the, the 30 day credit system as, that never changed over the years and you got to depend on that. But when you're getting the wages every week you know you you've got a few dollars all the time. But Don Plum Insurance is a is, uh, it's better than nothing, but that's just it. It's just better than nothing. So it's bad for the dragomen and the plant workers, but it's also bad it's, for the inshore. It's, uh, it's bad for everybody this year. You know, Christ, there's nobody with no great deal of money made this year because the plants were pretty slow in the in the process, and now uh, now the, with the lack of fish, 
over the last couple of weeks, two and three hundred pounds a day. That's not too much fish, you know. But I, on a given week, if you could fish uh, the five or six days of the week, you're talking about uh, 12, 1,400 pounds and, or a couple of thousand pounds, and that's a week's wages, you know, the price fishes today. So you'll have to have some pretty good weather. Well, we're hoping for for the month of October last year was our best month, one of our best months fishing, so it could be a repeat, you know. It was a really good month last year in October. I suppose the ones who suffer most are the dragomen and the plant workers. Well, the dragomen and the plant workers are the ones who suppose to suffer most, but there's nobody having it too easy this year. The plant workers now, they're off, but see, uh, everything is up in air with fortune fishing. That's our main buyer because we don't know if it's going to open anymore. There's all kinds of talk going around and rumors. Some says that they're not going to open anymore, and some says they're going to open in the new year, so a lot depends on what happens in January coming. And if the plants don't open in Fortune, we're left looking for a buyer for next year. So you face a pretty lean winter right now. That's right, you know. Money-wise, and you got we got to look ahead for another year, and that's something else we got to have straightened out before May comes this year. The fishermen got to know where they're going to, what they're going to do. And so there's bewilderment and confusion, a feeling of helplessness, of quiet rage. Is it ever possible that the fishery can be allowed to collapse here on the Bjorn Peninsula? Is this the only future? A trawler sailed by the oil rig. It made me think of the Slaney brothers and other trawlermen who've already tried for jobs in oil rigs and supply ships. Will our best fishermen desert the fishery? And what about these youngsters? Sons of trawlermen, maybe. Too busy now hunting rock crabs to worry about the symbols that lie anchored out in their bay. It's their future too we're talking about, isn't it?